A biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. Well, you might be curious about what impact Christianity is likely to have on the US presidential election. Christian social commentator David Robertson's back with us. He's been reflecting on developments and whether Christians have significant influence on the possible outcomes. David, a special welcome back to 2020. Yeah, thank you. It's nice to be back with you. So, uh, you know, in our minds, and as I often will say, so many Aussies know more about what's going on in the US presidential election than they might know about elections that are going on here in Australia. But uh, we're talking Donald Trump. uh, We're talking about Kamala Harris. Uh, Let's start, David, with uh, perhaps uh, evangelicals and their attitudes and support for Donald Trump or attitudes and support for Kamala Harris. Uh, What are your thoughts here? Yeah, well, just to reflect on on the first thing that you said, it is it is particularly concerning that uh, Australians take so much interest in the U.S. election. At least some do, but I think that reflects our own media, who are seem to be just as obsessed with it as um, uh, you know as the Americans are. And I think that's the influence of American media culture. And unfortunately, I think also we take a lot of our opinions in that way. And social media really hasn't helped either. But one of the one of the kind of memes that goes around is that evangelicals support Trump and that it's hypocritical for them to do so. Um, And it's much, much, much more nuanced than that. And I think there are some important lessons for us to learn. So um, the last time I looked, they were reckoning about 75 percent of those who profess to be evangelicals. And uh, note the way that I phrase that, because sometimes the word evangelical, uh, how it's used, it's, it's very strange. Um, But 75% of those who profess to be evangelicals uh, say they support Trump. About 20% or so would say they support Harris and others, uh, maybe third party or or whatever. But as I say, it's, um, it's, it's so interesting watching and so sad watching how politics has degenerated in the way that it has. Interesting, isn't it? Because it's a little more sophisticated in the US than our issues perhaps here in Australia. Of course, we can get sophisticated here too, but uh, it's not just um, it's not just whether you're an evangelical, but uh, there are all sorts of different ways you can break down people's religious affiliations. Uh, you've got evangelicals, uh, you've got Catholics, uh, you've got Pentecostals, uh, you've got people who are atheists and agnostics, you've got Jewish people, you've got, uh, you've got people who are Hispanics, who might be Protestants and who might be Catholics. It's all very complicated. And so I guess you've got to rely on people doing specific research to be able to get an idea of who holds to which part of which religious affiliation. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think I, I wouldn't agree that it's more sophisticated in the US. I actually think it's uh, sophisticated is not the way that I would describe it. It, it. So much of it is just propaganda, people shouting at one another and so on. In fact, uh, I think X or Twitter, you know, I have to get off it at times because I just get so frustrated at what I see. Um, but I think the um, the American system is... There, there are really good things in it. You know, I think that the, the way that the balance of powers occurs, but the presidential system, it seems to me to be an absolute mess. Uh, also, I mean, I do want to come back to the use of the term evangelicals because I, I read one report that said there are 40 percent of evangelicals who don't go to church, uh, you know, or don't uh, similar number don't believe in the Trinity. Well, they're not really evangelical. You know, it then becomes a social label rather than a, a label of who is a Christian. So I think we have to be very, very careful with all the the labels thing. Uh, it's interesting, too, because I remember, uh, you know, some years ago, and I can't remember all the details and where all this came from, but uh, the fact that Catholics in America are so much more aligned with evangelicalism because of the evangelical foundations, uh, the Christian foundations of the U.S., that even the Catholics uh, sort of swing that way as well. And uh, I mean, I'm probably... Uh, it probably doesn't make sense to say uh, evangelical Catholics, but, you know, there is a certain sense in which uh, some people, while they might attend one church, uh, their beliefs may well be aligned with uh, other different denominational connections. Yeah, I think, though, there's there's another interesting aspect there, and that is it, I think it's more to do with um, the social conservatism of Catholic teaching, particularly on the issue of abortion, which has been made a major issue. 
Um, and, you, you know, it, it, it's ironic that President Biden was and still says he is a professing Catholic, that he was against abortion until it became a, a political liability for him and now says that he's for it. So I think abortion is a huge issue in the US. And we see that being reflected here because I see that the Stephen Miles, the current premier of, of uh, Queensland, who's standing for re-election, has sought to make abortion an issue in following exactly the Kamala Harris playbook. Oh, look, this is a, a woman's right and... Uh, the liberal guy is going to take it away from you, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, it, I mean, I, again, I find it sad that American politics has been reflected in our own. But I do think the social conservatism is a huge part of it. And that's also, incidentally, why you will get, surprisingly to many people, many Latinos, possibly 40 percent, uh, voting for Trump this time. Interesting on this abortion issue, uh, because I saw some research uh, that suggested uh, that abortion is the most Im or is a very important, I might say, issue uh, by more atheists. <laughs> now, that's yep. interesting, isn't it? Because, uh, of course, uh, atheists are likely to be on the pro-abortion side. And uh, when you talk about evangelicals or people who might be of a Christian persuasion, whatever, uh, it might appear that there's not as much passion and uh, and determination on those who might be anti-abortion as those who are on the atheist side and pro-abortion. I, I don't know. Any thoughts there? Yeah. Well, I thought that was fascinating, actually. Uh, and it, that, that funny, um, uh, you and I must look at the same sources because I I, I, I was quite taken by that statistic. Um, and it seems to me, just in, at a wider context, that an atheist materialistic worldview is fundamentally anti-human. Um, I think this culture of death that exists in terms of both euthanasia and abortion and elsewhere, you know, just in the wider picture, forget particularly Trump-Harris, uh, in the wider picture, our society and culture as a whole is moving away from its Christian foundations. And we're ending up in a situation where instead of protecting the weakest, that is the child in the womb or the, the, the elderly person who is dying, we are talking about it being obvious that it's a human right to be able to kill the baby in the womb. And that shows you how far we've moved away from our Christian foundations. But I did see that statistic. I, it was a huge number. I think it was nearly almost 90 percent uh, of atheists who were very pro-abortion. I wouldn't doubt that. And uh, and perhaps the, even here in Australia, I wonder whether uh, religious affiliations like that and people who like to call themselves nuns, uh, you know, I'm not calling myself anything religious right now, uh, whether that might be another word for uh, I'm atheist or I'm agnostic or it gives me an excuse to be pro-abortion. Any thoughts about that, uh, that, the way that might even overflow here into Australia? Yeah, I, I think there is a a flow over into Australia. I mean, we, we see similar things so that um, what I would call the majority of the, the governing classes, if you like, you know, the, the majority of people in mainstream media, in uh, academia uh, and in politics uh, and on the corporations, they would tend to have a worldview which is de facto atheistic and therefore they support these kind of causes whereas a significant number of ordinary people are just not like that there you know and that by the way involves different religions i mean in australia we have very much common cause with say um muslims and jews actually on some of the social issues so it's 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 interesting seeing that also being played out within australia and i think politicians need to realize that uh, a lot of their voters are not progressives, uh, but they are what I would call or what has been termed social conservatives. In other words, they hold to a traditional view of morality and so on. And you see that coming up in the in the U.S. election. I, I, normally, I would not expect someone like Donald Trump to have any chance of being elected. But when you're faced with a choice, and this is what many Christians have to face, they're faced with a choice of uh, a man who has uh, character defects like like Donald Trump, and then uh, a woman like Kamala Harris, who, who, by the way, also has character defects, uh, but 
has policies which are so extreme that it, I, it, for me it's almost inconceivable how a, a Christian could vote for them. Now, I know that the, some Christians say, well, we're not voting for them, we're voting for her, but in politics it ma- amounts to the same thing. Uh, interesting, isn't it, around uh, Donald Trump and republicanism and uh, the way that Christians... Uh, in the U.S. appear to have been so much more leaning towards the Republican side. And uh, as you identify, some of the policies on the Democrat side are so abhorrent to Christians, uh, you don't really, there's no real surprise by that. Uh, There's some suggestion that uh, while Donald Trump had everyone offside first time that he was president, uh, there's some thought now that he might be actually becoming more mainstream Republican Uh, Is that likely to endear him more to the Republicans who said, I'm a never Trumper, I'd never vote Republican again because of Donald Trump? Any thoughts here around uh, Donald Trump? And because, of course, he aligned himself so much with mainstream Christianity and uh, now uh, mainstream Republicanism, perhaps he's softening his Christian view and moving more to just conservative view. Any thoughts here? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say it was conservative. I, I would say w- what it appears to me is that he, unfortunately, evangelicals are perceived as a voter block and therefore the largest voter block in the US. And I think it was a pretty smart move on his part to, you know, seek to get them on side. Um, for me, I, I just think it's much more complex than that. Uh, I suspect he's not fundamentally, for example, anti-abortion. But he did put into place those who, in the Supreme Court, who certainly limited things. Uh, But yeah, I I would never look at Donald Trump and say, well, he's the Christian candidate upholding Christian values. But I also look at the people around him. I mean, this may be an extremely pessimistic view, but for me, it's just the lesser of two evils. Um, Having said that, he seems, particularly since his assassination attempt, to have shown a little bit more humility in some things. Um, but I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a, I, I take the Bible quite seriously, and when it says yes. "don't trust in princes," I don't, uh, I, I don't put my faith in any politician, and I'm very wary about being um, putting too much hope in one side. I'm, I'm just praying that God will save us from ourselves. Come back to the idea of evangelicals being a voter block, and let's include anyone who names the name of Christ and calls themselves a Christian in all of that, whether they're black or white or Catholic or Protestant. uh, A voter block uh, in the US, there's a substantially bigger uh, Christian voter block in Australia, and therefore politicians need to uh, set policies according to attracting that voter block. Here in Australia, the voter block is somewhat more less significant. Uh, we might even talk about uh, it on a good weekend. It'd be good to get ten percent of. Australian Christians into church. As I understand it, in the US, it's somewhere 40, 50 percent will still be church goers in the US. So, a voter block, uh, really, if you are a voter block, there's some strength and ability to help shape the morality of a nation, isn't there? So, how do you compare the two here? Well, I, I don't think that you can really put all Christians as a block. So, uh, unfortunately, it, it did become the case about 30 to 25 years ago that the perception was and sometimes it was even taught that if you were a christian you'd be a republican i think it's very very bad to identify christianity with one particular party political group i mean i would hope in my congregation that there would be left wing right wing all different kinds but where our society is changing is left and right become have become more and more meaningless you get people who say that they're billionaire communists for example or socialists um, and it's it's ironic that the working class tend to be moving more right wing in some ways i i think the big issue now is where we stand on issues that are very clear in the bible in terms of uh morality and i i think that that's where we do need to place more influence so for example um i think it's 
six percent of Australia's population is Muslim, but they're very much seen seen as a, a, a Muslim bloc and and very much influence government policy, particularly foreign policy. I'm not saying that Christians should act like that, but what I do think is that uh, when we are being told on mainstream media, oh, that the vast majority of civilized society supports abortion as a human right or thinks euthanasia is a good thing, that's not true. Uh, and we need to challenge that. We need to challenge the narrative. And I think that's one of the things we can learn from the US election. But I definitely don't want to go down the line of if you're a Christian, you'll vote liberal, or if you're a Christian, you'll vote labor, or if you're a Christian, you'll vote um, green or the nationals or whatever. I, I just think that's very unwise. Of course, Americans say economy is important. Uh, they're also saying immigration issues uh, is very important there. Uh, let me ask you here, David, and uh, we're running short of time. I wish we had a whole lot more. But uh, when we yeah. divide the policies, economic policies and social policies, uh, some will say, well, I only vote according to economy and uh, cost of living challenges, all of those sorts of things. Others will say, I'm only voting according to these social issues, uh, you know, the abortion issue, uh, big issues around euthanasia and all sorts of social uh, challenges. What are you thinking about how people actually think about casting their vote? Because a couple of elections coming up, there's one in the ACT this weekend, there's one coming up in uh, Queensland uh, just uh, just under 10 days away. Uh, what are your thoughts here about social and economic and how you might be thinking about the policies of the people you're voting for? Indeed. Oh, I, I mean, I, I think that we could do a whole new program on this, but I think that social and economic often interplay. So, for example, we've been talking about abortion or euthanasia. Well, money often comes into that. In fact, the number one reason for people having an abortion is economic. Um, and euthanasia, the pressure that's put on people is because of economics, you know, and states, uh, you know, let's get rid of the older people who are just a burden and are costing us a lot of money. Um, so, you know, I think they interplay. I think that the question there, though, for Christians is, are we single issue voters? So um, and, and in some senses, I think we have to be. I mean, if I had, if there was a candidate who was a racist, but was very good in other spheres, I still wouldn't vote for him. And I think if, if, if there's a candidate who supports abortion, the only way that I would ever vote for them is if their view on abortion was less extreme than their opponent is, is, is how I would put it. So there are some issues that for me are absolute. I'm not going to support a racist. I'm not going to support someone who, um, you know, is a warmonger. I'm not going to support somebody who prioritizes the rich over the poor. Um, I, and I'm certainly not going to support somebody who supports uh, killing the most vulnerable in society. So those for me are, are, are very, very key issues. I mean, I find myself when I was back in Scotland, because I am from Scotland, at, at some elections, I found myself with nobody to vote for because I used to interview all the candidates personally. I used to write them. I mean, I took it really seriously. I wanted to exercise my vote and voting for the least worst option wasn't really what I wanted to do. I remember one time I even voted for the Socialist Workers Party, kind of extreme left wing, just as a, a protest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, I've, you know, you, you look at things. I've, I found myself. I wasn't a conservative. I found myself voting for a conservative candidate once because I just thought they were the <laughs> the, 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 the the least worst. You know, um, and that was me as at the time as as what was a, a Scottish nationalist supporter. So I find myself um, as a Christian very much disenfranchised and. I, I think that the mainstream political party should realize that there are there are millions of people like me who we're not asking you that you support every single thing or give us every single thing that we want. But consider the fact that maybe the liberal progressive view of morality and ethics and the economy is not what most people are looking for. And there's a lot of votes to be had from people like me. Well, I always appreciate your honesty and uh, being up front and you're a little bit out on the edge there. And, uh, you know, not everybody will be thinking, oh, I thought uh, I thought David Robertson was uh, a little more uh, on the conservative side. But uh, very interesting getting your insights, David. Hey, uh, yeah, time has I, run out. Yep. You were going to say? Yeah, thanks. No, I was going to say, I, I, I mean, yes, I, look, I, I'm just thoroughly confused. There's lots of people who say um, <laughs> It, you know, I, I come back to, look, it's simply for me as a Christian, I, I was just reading this recently. Uh, Luther was saying, you should stop worrying about who's going to run the world. God is running the world. And as Christians, we trust that. We take involvement in society. But 
please, please, please never, ever put your hope, your absolute hope in politicians. Put it in Christ. That's right. Put our hope in Christ. And the fact that we have a preferential voting system here in Australia means you might be able to identify a Christian candidate or one that ascribes to your values. And you might want to put a one in that square and uh, use your preferences to go with the bigger parties, uh, may, which may be the lesser of two evils. Uh, Christian yeah. social commentator David Robertson. Uh, and let me just say, David Robertson, you can read his latest blogs at theweflee.com. Theweflee.com. David writes for newspapers, magazines. He's the author of a number of books, including The Dawkins Letters and Engaging with Atheists. He's also the minister at Scott's Kirk Presbyterian Church in Newcastle in New South Wales. If you're planning a Newcastle holiday, uh, make sure you put that on your agenda. Uh, theweflee.com. David, thanks so much for taking some time to share your thoughts and heart with us today. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.